good afternoon or good morning to all of you. Um, this session is going to be on the ICHE6 changes uh, that have come with R3, E6 R3. It seems that we only just had R2. Well, when you're as old as I am, it does. So I'm going to dive straight into the subject and tell you a bit about myself and why I can talk to you about this topic. Well, I've been in the industry some 40 or odd years, um, lots of experience in risk-based approach, risk-based monitoring, ICH, quality tolerance limits, everything. Um, I started work in the National Health Service, well, that wasn't my first job, I'd worked in statistical geophysics before that. Spent 32 years with Boehringer, and last five years of that, I also worked with Transcelerate, that industry body where the top 20 or so companies are members of that. And for the last nine years, I've been undertaking consultancy. Something that's not there is that I'm dyslexic. I think differently from everyone else. Um, your, I always say your weaknesses are your strength and your strength are your weakness. Uh, and this thinking differently, I often see a solution before other people have even seen the problem. And so I try to go very slowly and go back to square one and explain why we're doing things. What companies have I worked for? Well, anything from the top uh, 10, uh, one in the top 10, right down to small biotechs. I've worked with most of the vendors in this area. Um, doing everything from ICHE6 R2 gap analyses. I've recently done an R3 gap analysis, um, looking at what they should be doing against what they are. Um, then lots of work on training and SOPs. Um, and also I've worked for about 70 companies in those nine years. Some of them small jobs, some of them major efforts. So it gives me a broad spectrum across a whole industry that I can talk about. There's the course description. I hope you know why we're here, um, follow, following up on that GCP renovation. And of course, I will be bringing ICH E8 R1 into it because the regulators do say, don't re you've got to read both ICH E6 R3 together with ICH E8 R1. E8, of course, is about uh, the design and really is focused on what we do as sponsors. And E6, is, its primary focus is on the conduct of a study. So uh, the learning objectives of the day, today I want you to understand the regulatory background. I want to take you slowly through what has led to all these changes. I think if you understand why, you'll be more understand what those changes are going to mean to you. Understand those key objectives of ICHE 6 R3 and the changes between R3 compared with R2, which will be the main part of this. Introduce the concept of quality by design and its application to clinical de development. And that's really important, uh, not just for R2, uh, E6, R3, but also ICH, E8. And also to understand the role of risk management changes and measured quality in quality by design. Now I've put down there, understanding the difference between a guideline versus regulation. These are of course, guidelines, but a guideline should be viewed as a minimum standard, like thou shalt not kill, is a guidance, it's a minimum standard. Um, a regulation is do not exceed the speed limit. I won't ask how many of you have exceeded the speed limit, um, we might get all the wrong answers. So let's start with what problems and issues you have with clinical trials. Problems, first of all. And just think about these. 
protocol amendments. Reconsent that obviously comes from protocol amendments. Patients lost the follow up. Uh, quality issues, new technology, complexity of clinical trials. Investigator reporting to the ethics committees. Oversight, oh, that's a very common issue throughout the industry. The cost of clinical trials, doing too much. And training, training, training. Oh, how we do seem to love our training. And we, but we always blame it if something goes wrong. And what issues do we have? Well, the rapidly evolving clinical trial environment with new technology, decentralized trials, new methods, a lack of proportionality has been raised by academia. That was one of the key things um, of changes from R2. They didn't feel that R2 really suited them. GCP has been seen as a one size fits all. We, we apply the same methods to everything. And of course, that comes at a very high cost. And that ability to meet the GC requirement at all times, take COVID, for example, um, when we couldn't get to sites, and yet we had a requirement that we had to be on site. Yes. And GCP requirements being applied when they're not applicable, just because someone says, well, that's how we used to do it in our old company. Now, I've told you I'm dyslexic, I think differently. I always like to do word counts of documents, really to see, understand the thinking and where they're making changes, where they're putting the emphasis. And we've got the word in the first column, uh, second column, E6R2, the old version of GCP, then E6R3, but that excludes Annex 2. We'll get on to Annex 2 in a minute. And finally, ICH E8R1. You can see that huge increase in risk, but also metadata went from zero to 24. Oversight, three to 23 mentions. Proportionate, two to 22. Validation, reliable. And it's a change of use of reliable. In the old version, it was reliable results, reliable, no, reliable data. Now it's reliable results in R3. Fitness purpose, for purpose has come in high, as well as critical to quality, although that's mainly in E8 because that really comes into the design. Quality by design, feasibility and transparency. And we'll come back to those because they're guiding principles of what we're seeing.